Are you a parent? Are you a father or a mother? Do you have kids? Do you babysit? Are you a teacher? Are you a counselor? How do you discipline people as a policeman or as a parent or as a person in general? What do you do to, to discipline, to, uh, to make people see that they're kind of wrong and you're kind of right? about something, if they do something bad, what do you do? Do you spank them? Do you sit on them? Do you yell at them? Do you take things away from them like they're toys? Do you hit them and abuse them? Well, which you shouldn't do. Do you verbally abuse them? Which some people do. Which my father is guilty of that. My mother would sit on us and we would have temper tantrums. And I used to have that until I was about 8 or 10 years old then I kinda stopped but it's something that's pretty extreme when somebody has a temper temper and something that people continue to have for the rest of their lives you, you, you see somebody just yelling and screaming as an adult that's basically the same thing as a temper tantrum they continue to do it maybe their parents didn't sit on them like my mother did, and to drive away the temper tantrums. Do I sound like a southern Southerner? 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 Do I sound like a southerner? Do I look? Do I sound like a Texan with a speech impediment? You know, for the United States. Because I'm so conservative with my views. Is that what you think? I believe that drastic times calls for drastic measures and sometimes you need to do certain things like sit on your kids or you know tell them what's up tell them mate hey, you're wrong because of this and this and this but do it in love you need to tell people the truth in love you sometimes you need to take away their sim city game that they're working on you know the super nintendo sim city video game that they really love and they're playing it all the time but it's like they don't listen to you, you need to take it away. But the little boy is like, oh man, I'm only, only like 11 years old. Man, I really love this. Oh, it's like, nah, around 1996 or so. And I'm like, you know, I'm in Forest Grove, Oregon, and where I was born and raised in a trailer in the ghetto. And I'm like, man, I want some of this. I want to do what I want to do. I, I want to play my games. So don't take away my games. But oh, I do something wrong, and then my mother takes it away. And then I have to go run around and go into her room, sneak into her room, and she's not around, and try to find it. It's like, oh, I'm going to find it. Yes, I'm going to find it. Because it's like, I can't believe you hit it again. It's like, why are you hiding it? Oh, maybe she should tell me. Or maybe she did, and I wasn't listening. Parenting can be a tricky problem. One of the most biggest problems with parenting is if you're not consistent with how you discipline. If your mother says, okay, ah, uh, it's okay. And your father says, no, it's not okay. Or usually it's your father that says, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Because the father is more, uh, less strict. Sometimes. Sometimes the father's really, really strict. And he says, you can't have any boyfriends. I will shoot you if you touch my girl. Sometimes the, the mother is more strict. And then the mother and the father disagrees about what kind of pun punishments they should give to their children. And then the children get a hold of that. They realize there's a disagreement, and then they play off that. And they say, oh, well, Daddy lets me do it. That's really bad. That messes with the people's brains, with the children's brains. And, and that may just ruin them for the rest of their lives. And they're like, you know, I don't really know what's right or wrong, because my mother would always say, oh, that's right. And my father would always say, oh, no, that's wrong. And I, I'm really confused, and I, I think I want to have sex with people now or something. I have daddy issues or something. And, and, you know, those kinds of things happen from time to time. It's kind of unfortunate, but it, it happens. So one of the most important things with parenting, regardless of how you discipline, it's consistency. Consistency is very, very important. It's reliability. Reliability. Consistency. Predictability. Your children need to understand what they did wrong, why they did it, you know, why, why it's wrong. <laughs> Maybe you don't know why they did it, but they can tell themselves why they did it. But they need to know why it's wrong, first of all. 
and, and, and why you're punishing them, how you're punishing them, what the punishment is, which could be anything for, for, for the person, depends on the person, depends on what kind of kid they are and what kind of discipline they deserve. Because each person is different, like each car is different, like each phone is different. I guess, I guess most phones are typically the same, so they do have different numbers in them. You know, you know, be careful. Because what you say will become a part of your children for the rest of their lives, whether you know it or not. It goes with them for the rest of their lives. You may think, well, it doesn't really matter. You know, other people like Michael Jackson and, 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 and you know, famous singers and, and famous people, oh, it seems like what they say is more important than what the, oh, their father and mother says. But that's not true. They may not admit it, but the things that come from their parents stays in them for the rest of their lives. And they never forget it. They never ever forget it. Even if they don't talk about it, it's embedded in their souls. And they'll never forget it. So try to be consistent. Try to be faithful. Try to be there for them. Try to tell them what's up. Try to tell them what's right and what's wrong. Even when they're not listening, try to show them that you care. Try to be there for them. Try to discipline them when you can. And tell them why. And try to tell them that you still love them no matter what. Don't disown them if they're a Muslim and they become Christian or something. Or if they're Christian and, and then they become atheist or something. Or they do something bad or they, they have babies when they're only 12 years old. You know, when they're like a teen and they're having babies. And don't disown them. You know, you should tell them they're not, you're not happy. But at the same time, you shouldn't be like, well, you know, I never want to see you ever again. Because that's not love. If you look in the Bible... You can learn a lot of principles about how to love because God is an ultimate example of, of love, of unconditional love. You can see it in the Old Testament in the book of Hosea. Hosea is commanded to love a prostitute. The prostitute goes and has sex with other people, kind of like my father does with other people while he was still married to my mother. And, you know, these things happen. But true love will love the people no matter what they do. And ultimately speaking, you can't discipline if you don't love. And if you don't know what love is, you can't really discipline people because you don't understand discipline. Because discipline comes from love. It's roots out of love. And the only way you can know love is through God. Well, you can know a little bit of love without knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Creator. Especially if you're Richard Dawkins or somebody. And you say, well, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense for it to work. Because how else would it work? You say, well, science will figure it out, but science is not going to figure it out. Not completely. And life is sort, and what if you're wrong about the way you look at the world? Love is very important. You need to love people no matter what. Love your enemies as yourself. Love other people no matter what. Try to care for people. Try to be there for people, especially your children.